STEM is a project that Mark and I started this year uh, that's intended to bring artists and scientists together. The openness and the collaborative nature uh, that USU essentially fosters has been a really amazing experience for me. When you get to know somebody with really different training and background and perspective, it changes the way you can see the world. And that changes the things you can know and the things you can understand. I was invited to be part of the project by Mark and Nancy when they were looking for a scientist who was interested in developing an art project based on science and working with scientists and artists to really build something that could speak to the general public both about science and art. This project is about caddis fly populations in the Logan River. And we started collecting samples of caddis fly. We started cataloging them. We started looking at them under scanning electron microscopes. And we even were starting to look at specific physiological uh, attributes that are specific to certain caddis fly that are found in our area. Art is one way that we can often communicate more effectively. It's a broader kind of engagement than just the details. We're using art not just as a way to shed a light on it, but also as an inspiration for the scientists creatively to come up with solutions. This project is based at Utah State, right here. And it's really an incredible place when you think about it, because there are not many rivers that are as free and wonderful as the, the Logan that comes right out of the mountains here, and then passes right through town. So it has this relationship with all the people who live here. People fish in the Logan, they recreate around the Logan, they hang out in the Logan. And so there's a real connection to people's hearts. And when it comes to the science about the river, the researchers that have worked here at the university, but also just on the Logan River over time, have gotten to know a lot of the organisms that actually live here in the river and depend on the river, but maybe in a little bit different ways than the people actually depend on the river. And so this was a key opportunity for us to work with both the science and the art to think about water issues that affect people and the environment and the insects that actually live in the river. Rather than just go ahead and draw a picture or take a photograph or make a painting or make a carving about your response to the river, how can an artist actually be involved in the restoration aspects of a river? How can you take the natural surroundings and, and hopefully improve them, but in a way that also becomes public usage as well. We wanted to make something that was going to be really habitat for caddisflies. So we wanted the stones to be in the river. We wanted these eddies to be swirling around in places. We also wanted the leeward sides of the rock to provide a little bit of refuge so that different species of caddisflies might be able to really colonize in different places around the rocks. At the same time, there was this aesthetic goal, which was to make this appealing to people something that visually was arresting, but also inviting. If you want somebody to pull a string or a handle, you make it look like a handle. Well, if you want people to actually go out into the river and use the river, create stepping stones that they can walk on, that they recognize as something that they can use. When you're in the river, you feel it, you hear it, it's cooler, it sounds wonderful, it's sparkly, it's beautiful, you see the current move. The idea was to welcome people into the river, to draw them into the river. We took into account the kind of materials we'd use, the placement of the sites, and we spent some time in the river trying to figure out which kinds of the caddisflies would be in which different sorts of places and the kind of habitat that they liked. I mean, we wanted to have a physical, sculptural uh, a component as well. At the end of each partial J-hook or spiral, they'll also be able to be um, viewing scopes that are 5x magnification scopes that people can actually even see underneath the water to see either the lack of, of vegetation or the lack of natural habitat or sea habitat, meaning if they see caddisflies underwater, they'll be able to recognize them. We're hoping that not only is it a public outreach, but also it spawned uh, research about physiological attributes of the caddisfly in addition to hopefully creating a, a much better environment for the caddisfly propagation.